Hello there, my fellow pilgrims of the Imperial Creed, and welcome to another episode on the Adeptus Ministorum from Warhammer 40k. We have been talking about the Church of the Emperor for about five episodes now, and I am happy to say there's still enough lore left for a few more. But for today's topic, we shall tackle another of the specialists from the organization, akin to the Banisher or Crusader we already talked about. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the Redemptionist. Do stay until the end of the video too and vote for a future topic. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? If nothing else, we all know that the Imperial Creed is not a forgiving faith. Those that observe its doctrines in the strictest way possible know that redemption can only be found in death. Redemptionists will often congregate in cults, whose focus of hatred for a particular sin in the Emperor's eyes is very similar. These cults are highly xenophobic and violent, and their members are sworn to expunge all sin with fire and blade. For some cults, their focus of hatred is very limited, either mutants, witches, or aliens. But for the Redemptionists themselves, sin exists in every creature, and it can only be purged via bloodshed. A few cardinals within the Ecclesiarchy see these cults for what they are, breeding grounds for the assassins of the faith. They will provide the cults with resources as well as targets. Confessors or other clergy will often accompany them to document and bear witness to the faithful's campaigning of cleansing. The Redemptionists who prove themselves competent or especially devoted are often recruited into the service of a cardinal or into a cell of Inquisition acolytes. Although ostensibly pro-imperial, such militant factions, ironically, can often pose more of a threat to the Emperor's peace than even the heretics they want to destroy. Their mob mentality and ability to rouse a population into a frenzied witch hunt, blinded by its all-consuming need for the guilty and the blasphemous to be cleansed, can cause a serious problem to any planetary government, upsetting the precarious balance of power allowing a world to exist in a galaxy containing a thousand and one threats. The task at hand is never truly done, in the eyes of a redemptionist. For when all the Xenos of an area had been purged, then all those that aided them must be purged too. And then all those who failed to fight the Xenos must also be purged, followed by all those who might fail in the future, and so on, until everyone is prosecuted for their failure to prevent such heretical acts. Planetary governments must often act very quickly, before the frenzied need to put the blasphemous to the pyre spreads. But even redemptionist cults can be callously and cynically manipulated by individuals for their own purposes, and often act as a front for even more nefarious activity. Clever leaders will find new targets or crusades for their own redemptionist cults. More drastic means may also be utilized to control the cults, including condemning the members of a cult as heretics themselves. Inquisitors, especially those of the Puritan orientation, put these reactionary cults to productive purposes in acolyte cells, which either lack the focus, the faith, or simply a large chainsword capable of rendering an orc or a heretic in two. At the end of the day though, a redemptionist is only a man or a woman, and they are susceptible to many of the same depravities, confusions, and wounds as any other person. Determination and faith do not make one invincible, and many die willingly in their cause. Flamers are the weapon of choice for these militant fanatics, as the Emperor is often symbolized as the cleansing fire in these cults' doctrine. Outside of flamers, they use spiked maces, whirling chain axes, chain swords, and other weapons that rend and tear flesh in a scourging manner. Archdeacon Ludmillan is a self-styled leader of the Redemption in the Calixis Sector, and she has crushed all those opposing her with ruthless efficiency. To cement her spiritual rulership, Ludmillan also released a number of dictates, to which all the pure and the true should adhere to. And they are. Red is the color of redemption. It is the color of fire and blood. Do not consume narcotics, alcohol, or other substances giving pleasure. 
they are sin given substance. Do not suffer the witch to live, cast them to the fire. Do not suffer the mutant to live, rend their flesh apart. Do not suffer the heretic to live, for they have heard the emperor's truth and did not heed it. Force them to penance and then to death. Should the emperor's service require you to appear as others, do so. The mask and red robes of redemption must be donned when the time comes to set the sinner to their fate. When you take up the weapons of the emperor, do not show your face. You are the emperor's tool, and you are not on your own business. Pain is a gift. Mortification is a duty that should be performed daily. A strict adherence to the vengeful spirit of the imperial creed is the very first step on the road to becoming a redemptionist. Faithful communities all around the Imperium produce redemptionists and their cults. It is possible for both men and women to be a member of these cults, maybe coming from an ecclesiastical monastic community dedicated to zealous redemptionist doctrine. It is equally likely that a cardinal or inquisitor had an individual trained as a redemptionist from birth to serve in a specific role. Redemptionist cults also have a pretty common hierarchy which can include any or all of the following. The Redemptor Priest is the linchpin of any cult's crusade to cleanse heretics, xenos, or witches. He is the inspirational figure that the brethren follow to test their faith. It is he who is greeted with rapture by the Redemptionist cult members and who commands their clandestine help. Only the words of a Redemptor priest can fire the fury in men's hearts or save unbelievers from their sinful existence. The deacons of a Redemptionist cult attend to the secular affairs of the crusade. This can include silencing dissenters, controlling the crowds while the priest preaches, protecting their person from defilers, and so on. Deacons are confirmed brethren who are fanatically loyal to the redemption cult and completely trustworthy in the Redemptor priesthood's eyes. Their faith is rewarded with a position of responsibility and the best weaponry. The brethren make up the body of a redemptionist cult, the great mass of supporters dedicating themselves to the path of righteousness. Confirmed brothers are those who have spent time in the cult. Novices are often ordinary workers brought into the cult after hearing the preaching of a Redemptor priest, and the senior members of the cult hope that their fanatical zeal will compensate for their lack of experience. Brethren are usually well armed, but with simpler weapons than those available to the Redemptor priest or the deacons. The zealots are the crazed individuals present in the Redemptionist cults who have been touched by the Emperor's fury. They are so filled with bile and anger against those that would transgress the God Emperor's will that they are almost permanently in a state of rage. They test their faith by plunging headlong into battle with the greatest sinners they can find. They even lash themselves with whips and flails to savor the pain of purgation. But they would much rather carve the path of redemption into their enemies' hearts. They carry only pistols or close combat weapons preferring their battle of faith to be fought in melee. They are commonly armed with an eviscerator, a giant double-handed chainsword fitted with an exterminator flame cartridge to slice and to burn the unbelievers into charred lumps. A redemptionist cult sends units known as Crusades, which are comprised of their most dedicated and fanatical brethren to purge sinners with the holy fires of battle. One of these crusades is led by a Redemptor priest, with the blessing of the cult's council or the hierarchy of the local ministorum faction. A crusade destroys abominations and battles heretics as they find them. The Redemptor priest will preach to the locals of whatever the cult happens to be located at and reaffirms their faith. All this while the cult's brethren take a tithe of their produce, or, air tags, request that they make a donation to the collection plate. Then, and only then, will the crusade move on to battle the forces of darkness, keeping their fellow citizens safe from the real or imagined mutants, the witches and gangs of heretics wandering their locale. When a great number of redemptionist cult members come together without the leadership of a redemptor priest, a fanatical mob is formed. 
Typically, these are made of the incensed rabble of poor working class hive citizens who decide to take vigilante justice in their own hands. The path of righteousness is maintained at its purest with regular witch hunts and mass burnings of heretics and mutants. Now, as far as today's voting goes, you fellows can choose one of two options regarding the Ministorum. Option A, Imperial Saints, and Option B, The Confessors. To vote, simply write down the option you like more in the comments below. Thank you for participating. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about these Grey Day fanatics known as Redemptionists for today. Did you know about these people before? I mean, sure, the Imperium is filled with a lot of fanatics and zealots, and they are not all associated with the Church of the Emperor. But these guys do seem to take the cake. Do you find them interesting? What do you like or dislike most about them? Do share your thoughts and opinions, or questions if you have any, in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. The Emperor protects.